The recoil state manager is in maintenance mode, and that means that you're going to have to look for an alternative. Let me give you three different state managers to replace your recoil state manager right now. All right, so here's this dinky little test app that I built. In this case, this is the recoil version of it, but it shows the fundamental stuff that you'd want to do with a state manager. Starting off with maintaining an atomic state, in this case, count. You can then increment that. You get a double count, so that's derived data. You want to take some data and then derive new data from it. You want to be able to externally increment the count, meaning you want to actually go and make changes to that data from outside the React context. Then asynchronous data, so in this case, synchronously changing the user ID, but then asynchronously going off and making a fetch. How is that done? And then if I look at the console over here, we can see that there is an event listener. So how to do event listeners. This is all the kind of stuff that we would expect from a state manager like Recoil. Let's go first and take a look at how we did it with Recoil and then go and see how we would do it with these other state managers. All right, so let's first take a look at our Recoil test page. We can see that we're bringing in all the basic Recoil, including Atom to go and define the state, which we would use for the count state. So we start off the count state at zero. We then have the selector function that we use to define derived data that creates a new atom that is derived from the original count state atom. We also have the user ID, which again is atomic state, so having the default of one in there, so user one. And then we have an effect on that. This is how you do an event listener in recoil. You basically add an effect. You say that when we get a set for that, then we go and console log out a new value. That's how you listen to events or listen to changes in your data. User query is how we do our fetch of the data. We create a selector family. So this is a generative function. It basically goes and says, okay, if you give me an ID, then I will go and create a new atom in my family of atoms on the fly, or in this case, a selector that will go and give you the data, in this case, the fetch data in response. So how do we actually use any of this? Well, we use some handy React hooks. So for mutable data, where you want to both get the value as well as a mutator, you use use recoil state the same way you would with the use state. This is just use recoil state. You give it the atom, which is global, and then that gives you back a tuple with a value and then a setter. For derived data, in this case, like the double count, it's going to be read only. You use recoil value, and we also get the use recoil state for the user ID. So now things actually get pretty interesting down here where we have our user component. So our user component is asynchronous, right? So it's gotta go off and do that fetch and get that data. So let's go take a look at that. So it's getting the use recoil value of the user ID state that's giving us back our ID. And then it's using that user query selector family, giving it that user ID. Of course, that's managing things as a promise, it's asynchronous. And that's why down here, we're wrapping that user in a suspense. All right, so that's the recoil implementation. Recoil's in maintenance mode, so we need some alternative so let's go and take a look at the fastest state manager in the West, and that is Legend State. That's going to be our first alternative. So the basic way you manage state in Legend App State is to make an observable. So we're going to bring in observable from Legend App State and use it to create our count. Now we'll create another observable for double count. This one we're going to give a function, and that function is essentially telling it that it is going to be derived data. So then we're going to do count get. And that means that whenever count changes, that double count is automatically going to change. So really clean way to create not only atomic data with observable, but also derived data using exactly the same function. That's really nice. So for the user ID, we're just going to use observable with a primitive value. But for user, we're going to use this nice synced fetch plugin. And what that does is it says, well, okay, whenever user ID changes, we're going to go and do the fetch to go and get the new data. It handles all the fetch mechanics for us, which is just super clean. So the app in this case is just really, really tight and small. If we take a look at our app, we use the use dollar that's in the version three beta of legend app state to go and get the observables. To actually set the value of the observable, we're gonna use the set method. So we're first gonna get the value and then we're gonna set the value. Really interesting thing here is that we're doing exactly the same thing inside the React context as we would be outside of the React context. Now our select box where you select the user is made even easier by using this dollar react dot select. That's saying that we want a select tag, but we want to automatically handle binding the value to that tag as well as handling the change. And it does all of that for us. And that dollar react comes from this legend app state react web, really nice. 
And then to show the data, we just simply use user.name. We don't need to wrap it in a suspense or anything like that. That's all managed by that sync fetch that's up there in that observable. So just really clean, smooth, a very nice state manager as an alternative to recoil. Up next, let's take a look at Tanstack's addition to the world of state management, Tanstack Store. Tanstack Store is also really lean. We bring in Tanstack Store, we bring in Store, which is the basic quanta of state. So in this case, we're using Store to create count as well as user ID. And then we bring in derived, that's how we create derived data. So double count in this case, it just uses that derived function. You give it a function to specify how you want the derivation to be done, and then any dependencies. That's kind of the only little gotcha I would say in here is that depths has to be maintained. It's kind of nice over in legend depth state. I don't actually have to say that I have a dependency on count. It just automatically happens, but that's fine. That's okay. To do the asynchronous work as well as the logging, we're going to use an effect. So in this case, we're going to have an effect that depends on user ID. It's going to be eager, meaning that it's going to run right out of the box. If it's not eager, then that means it won't actually be run until that value changes. Once we get triggered, then we then call that function on FN. We console log it, so that's how we know that things have changed. And then we go off and we do the fetch, and then we just set the state of the store for user. Now let's go take a look at how to actually use this. So over in the app, we're going to do use store for count double and user ID. We can use those primitives right in our JSX. Now, just like legend state, both the internal to React and external from React uses the same mechanism for mutating a store. In this case, you just do set state and then you give it a mutation function. So that function takes the initial value. So in this case, say C, and then gives you back the new value. So C plus one. Our select box uses exactly the same mechanism and our user goes off and gets the data from the store. Now we don't need a suspense, so I can just bring that in here, drop that down in there, and then get rid of our user component, and that would work just as well. And in fact, that's the version I'll put up on GitHub for you, and of course there's a link to that in the description right down below. And if you wanna add your state manager to this list, feel free, add a PR, go and put in your state manager, and folks can have a look at that as an alternative to recoil. Now, the last one we're going to take a look at is the spiritual successor to Recoil directly called Jotai. Jotai is another state manager from Daiji Kato, and it is based on the initial design of Recoil. So I think it does qualify as essentially the spiritual successor to Recoil. However, it is actively maintained, and they are at adding plugins all the time to it. So it is a very vibrant ecosystem around Jotai. Now, there is another project in the space designed specifically to help you move from Recoil to Jotai, and that is the Jotai Recoil Adapter. I'll put a link to that in the description. It basically has exactly the same signatures as Recoil, except that under the hood, it's all Jotai. So you can keep your code exactly the same, or at least that's the promise, and get Jotai as opposed to Recoil. But we're going to actually kind of use Jotai directly. So we're going to use atoms from Jotai to go and define both the count state as well as the double count state. Looks very similar to legend app, right? So for user ID, we're going to create an atom, but we're going to wrap it with, with atom effect. And that's going to call us back whenever that atom changes. That's going to get our, our logging. So just like we use a selector family at recoil, we're going to use an atom family, not atoms family to do the user query. So in this case, we got a function that creates an atom for that data anytime that changes. And to create an async atom, all you gotta do is create an atom as an async builder and it automatically an async atom. So that's, that's really easy. Now let's go take a look at how to use these atoms. So you can either use use atom and that gives you that tuple of the value and a setter, or you can use use atom value like we do with double count just to get the value of the atom for React Direct. Inside of a React context, you can use that setter that we got back from use atom to set that atom. Externally, you can use store.set to get the store reference and then set that atom within that store. You can actually use context-based stores and kind of have different sections of your app have different sets of atoms if you want to do that. Really cool stuff. Now it comes to user ID with a select, we use just what we did before, value and then set user ID because we used user atom, we got that tuple back, we're gonna use that. And then for the user, because it's async, we're gonna wrap it in a suspense just like we had to do with recoil. And then inside of user, we're gonna use user and value to get that user ID. And then we're gonna pass off that user ID to that user query family. 
with user ID, get back the atom value, that's async, so that's why we wrap it in a suspense. But once that completes, then we get that name, and away we go. So Jota is probably the closest replacement you're going to get to Recoil. All right, well, I hope this gives you some options when it comes to where to go from Recoil. I can't stress enough how kind of sad this is. I, Recoil is fantastic, and I, I love the fact that it's out there, and that's OSS, and that Meta OSS'd it. It was a fantastic start to this Atom-based state management model, and I truly appreciate it, and I think if you use it, you should be appreciative to the team out there for all of the years of work that they put into Recoil. It's sad, but that's just kind of the way that OSS goes. Sometimes it maintains and is funded, and sometimes not. All right, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell, and you'll see more like it in 2025.